Hello everyone, today we will discuss ocular ultrasound to measure increased ICP. I'm Dr. Ayane. So the first thing that you see is uh, anatomy of the optic nerve. And the optic nerve is part of the sinus, which is surrounded by the dural sheath, which contains the subarachnoid space in the CSF. So the anterior part of the optic nerve is loosely attached to the dural sheath, which is covered by the orbital fat, and that makes it distensible. So due to the direct communication to the brain, the intraorbital subarachnoid space in the optic nerve, so it will be exposed to the same pressure when the uh, intracranial pressure changes. So as you see here, this is the uh, eye on the posteriorly, and this is the anterior part of the optic nerve. Uh, which is covered by the dural sheath and the arachnoid space is here. And uh, you see here is the retina and the choroid and the sclera. What we see in the normal eye with the ultrasound, we have the cornea, the anterior chamber and the, and the lens, the posterior chamber, the retina, and the, here is coming the optic nerve. So I have the technique that you are going to do the optic nerve diameter. So the first thing is the patient positioning and the patient should be uh, positioned supine and you use the high frequency probe or the linear probe. And then you apply gel uh, with the patient eye closed. Uh, the eyelid should be closed or you can apply a tape over the eyelid. And then you place the transducer gently over the eyelid. So you need to adjust the depths so that the globe uh, should take up the screen. And if the patient is alert, communicative, or uh, cooperative, you can uh, ask the patient to look forward. You may also ask the, them to uh, look in different direction while scanning. So this is what we see, the, uh, this is a linear probe or the high frequency probe. And you apply a uh, tigaderm or uh, you can directly ask the uh, patient to close his eyelid. And then you play, apply the ultrasound uh, probe over the eyelid lightly. So this is what we see with, uh, with the transducer anteriorly. And then you have a closed eyelid, the anterior chamber and lens and the posterior chamber. And you have the retina and then uh, posteriorly the optic nerve covered by the optic nerve sheaths. So the patient position line supine, the line probably placed on the eyelids lightly. This is what we see the posteriorly. There's a black structure is optic nerve. So when it's in detail, this is a cornea, the anterior chamber, and then followed by this lens and then you have a posterior chamber or the vitreous humor, the retina, two sides of attachments. And then you have uh, the optic nerve inside the optic nerve sheath. You have op optic nerve sheath, and then you have the optic nerve. So you'll get the best image of the globe in the optic nerve. Then you have to freeze it then measure three millimeter down from the retina. So they choose three millimeter from the retina because it is uh, the site where uh, the optic nerve has a potential to distend uh, significantly and also a best uh, localization uh, can be found from different studies, which is three millimeter down from the retina. So at that point you measure across the optic nerve and then uh, you measure horizontally the optic nerve from the inside the sheath to the inside, okay? Then you repeat from the other eye and take the, an average of the measurements. So what's the upper limits of normal? In adults, it's less than five millimeter, whereas in children up to uh, more than one year, uh, less than 4.5. In children, less than one year, less than four millimeter. So when you get uh, more than five millimeter, it's 100% sensitive for uh, elevated uh, ICP. Uh, but if you get more than 5.7, and then it's significantly specific. 
for uh, ICP. So you'll get sometimes up to 7.5. That's a maximum that you can go through. So there are different evidences that suggest optic nerve sheath diameter for a measurement of uh, ICP detection. Uh, different recordings, different studies suggest uh, more than five millimeter uh, is an indicator of an, an increased ICP with different sensitivity and uh, specificity. So if you can do it a proper way and in a proper site and then uh, with experience, you can uh, uh, do, you can detect uh, increased ICP uh, easily in bedside with the patients uh, not moving away from you. There are other indicators, so indications for ocular ultrasound, in retinal detachment, lens dislocation, growth rupture, foreign body, and others. So as you see here, uh, you don't see any globe inside. And so the anterior chamber is fully collapsed. And when you see here, the lens is coming down to the posterior chamber. This is a uh, dislocated lens. Whereas here you see a pericoid structure inside the uh, posterior uh, chamber, then it is a foreign body intraocular. And also you see the retinal detachments, okay, retinal detachments and uh, vitreous hemorrhage inside the posterior chamber. Or you can also detect the retrovulvar hemorrhage as you see on CT scan posteriorly. You see the hematoma and also you see the uh, guitar pick sign uh, posteriorly in the retrobulbar hematoma. Thank you. Stay tuned.